I'd like to uh, introduce next speaker, uh, Catalin Carrico. She's a pioneering uh, biochemist and researcher who's left an indelible mark on the field of mRNA vaccines. Uh, in the early 1990s, her groundbreaking, groundbreaking work began with the exploration of modified mRNA's potential to produce therapeutic proteins in the body. And that, as we all know, uh, ultimately led to a series of breakthroughs that ultimately paved the way for the successful development of mRNA vaccines and the vaccine for COVID. I'm on the board of Pfizer and, and um, was certainly aware and close to a lot of the scientific work and, and the inspiration, at, uh, in her inspiration. So it's a real honor to introduce her to you here today. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you very much. It's a, it is a privilege even participate on this uh, meeting and listening to you and uh, just sitting there, but now I am here. And uh, now I will talk about uh, developing mRNA for therapy. But before that, let me tell you, we talk about, you know, in the session here, you know, the discovery where it is coming and, and eventually, you know, when there is a large company or small company get a new product, FDA approved, we think it is done. No. We need the society to accept it. We heard, you know, talking about the GMO here before and here during the uh, anti-vaccine movement, we learned that, yes, there are people who learned basic biology and molecular biology and uh, uh, Facebook, and they kind of uh, very confident and they know things. And so all of us is responsible to fight misinformation and uh, go out in the public and try to use simple language and tell the people how things are. So uh, just an introduction to this one. I am talking about, you know, this 60 years when the first uh, mRNA, mRNA was discovered and took 60 years when it will be first FDA approved in the form of uh, COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. And kind of, uh, you know, similar to the other discoveries, like first uh, 20 years when RNA was just isolated and uh, analyzed structurally, functionally, then scientists start to think that maybe it is good for something. So 20 years, they know that when they could do uh, RNA coding for a functional protein, so they did playing in the laboratory. And the last 20 years about, you know, when uh, clinical trials started, and of course more scientists were testing out things. So this was 1961, when uh, we learned that the information flow, DNA, mRNA protein, and of course uh, people couldn't make uh, RNA at that point. Okay, they could make RNA, they could make poly U. Actually, it was happened in 1961. Isn't that good? Have you ever thought that these people didn't see the future, that they need a start codon? They just use poly, uh, poly U, and they get polyphenylalanine. But of course, you know, scientists want to make functional protein uh, coding RNA, and it, they just couldn't do it. They just could look at isolates. And uh, scientists uh, early on, you know, they discovered that there is a, there is a poly A stretch. So other scientists get the idea that, oh, we can use this oligo-DT and pull out. And now that uh, scientists here, like Furuichi, uh, Japan, you know, he figured out what is the other end of the RNA. And um, other scientists uh, were purifying with this oligo-DT and look at more, discovering the cap is needed for translation. And if you work on cap, in 1975, probably you get the nature paper easily. And uh, by the end of the year, 75, they also discovered the enzyme, in, uh, which is present in the uh, virus and then can put the uh, cap on. Scientists start to translate. We heard about earlier uh, presentation that they could isolate beta globin coding RNA. And they start to translate in first in lysates, they injected all site and they get the protein. And Alec Bancom in uh, London, he discovered how to make liposome in 65. And then experiment in 1978 uh, was performed when a messenger RNA was put in mammalian cells and that uh, generated the coded protein. This is again Dimitriadis you know, uh, research paper, one author research paper in Nature, and one, only one figure, 
and uh, that was it. So that was then. Uh, I happened to be in Hungary and as an undergraduate student and went to the lipid lab. This was the only place uh, was opening. And although lipid seems like boring, but you know, uh, these two uh, supervisor came actually from another part of the biochemistry department. They wanted to make liposome and uh, they needed um, phospholipid. Uh, we were behind the iron curtain, so we had to do many things on our own. So we isolated this from co-brain. So that's the PI role was in Hungary, going with the bike, get the co-brain from the slaughterhouse, and we spent one week to isolate this phospholipids, and we did a, a wrapped in DNA and delivered to the cell. But then, you know, I graduated, and uh, I didn't know that after liposome probably I should go to the RNA field, but I went to this RNA lab. That was, again, because the only opening. My supervisor, he actually did a syn organic chemist, synthesized the uh, uh, cap analog for Aaron Schatkin and Sen because they needed reference material. So 1978, I knew that uh, RNA has a cap, but my role was to develop uh, this antiviral compound. We heard this morning how important basic science, but here what happened, my supervisor came from the industry and he instilled to us that we have to do something which is useful. So um, Ian Kerr just discovered this molecule. This was uh, thought to be responsible for antiviral effect of interferon and Janu said that we need an antiviral compound because we need, we need one because there is none. So what I did, I set up a viral lab screening for uh, this molecule and I synthesized enzymatically, chemically, different ways and um, uh, found that it was really antiviral and it worked uh, together with Jan Ludwig and um, just mentioned because even today I ask a question from, organic chemist question from him. So it is good to be nice to your fellow student there. And uh, so we did um, these studies. I just mentioned this uh, is made by the OAS, this uh, molecule, and it activates RNAs L, which cuts up RNA. And that was what was thought that how it is antiviral. I might mention that now that during the COVID, you learn that if somebody OAS is uh, lower level, produce this enzyme, they are much seriously ill. So, you know, you hear that I was doing this RNA, that RNA. So. This was the first time I was terminated in my position and I might mention that four times it happened. I wouldn't be here if it wouldn't. So, But I don't say that embrace if tomorrow you are fired because uh, at the point is not very nice. So anyway, I ended up at Temple University. Uh, Professor Suhadon, he wrote the basic book on modified nucleosides and I worked in his laboratory. This was not the first time that we had no uh, lab coat and other things, but anyway, to making uh, two prime, five prime oligodenate is was easy if uh, you know we have this analog where is you know the three prime deoxy. Actually, my thesis in Hungary, I use this modified nucleoside to make two prime, five prime oligo. Anyway, we needed. We are in the uh, 1980s. We needed antiviral compound, and uh, but eventually, uh, because the AIDS was the pro major problem, but. Uh, at the end, we used double-stranded RNA and we treated HIV patients with double-stranded RNA. These were mismatched double-stranded RNA, so it was less toxic. We synthesized this uh, double-stranded RNA and it was infused to the patient. But unfortunately, the patient had uh, problems of, uh, you know, they have um, uh, interferon system couldn't be induced in this patient because the HIV has had other effects. Anyway, while I was working with this different RNA, something happened in the uh, uh, field because 1984, scientists discovered how we can make uh, RNA synthesize, which goes for functional protein. And uh, actually, uh, this was in here in Harvard, was uh, discovered that, that there are you can have a plasmid and you just make a transcription reaction for nucleotides. You add the uh, 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 phage polymerase 
and uh, from Bernard Morse, they get the capping enzyme, and uh, they generated this uh, human beta interferon coding RNA. They inject it to the old site, and um, when they culture the old site, what happened in the culture medium had antiviral effect. I mean, this uh, had a tremendous effect that people now could make an RNA code for specific protein. I, um, that was the time I, um, I was, again, terminated from Tempo and ended up in University of Pennsylvania and uh, working with Elliot Barnaton, who was just a week younger than me, so I convinced him that mRNA is the future. We have to do all in cardiology and mRNA, and we did a... a uh, we had this plasmid. Actually, I get from uh, uh, Paul Krieg. He sent in an envelope. I asked for the T7, but he said we have a better one. And every time I thanked to him for how generous he was. Anyway, I made this RNA coding for urokinase receptor. That was uh, Elliot's interest. And this is a highly post translational modified, uh, GPI link modified, and all of the sudden we could make, make functional proteins. So the cell knew what to do. And so this uh, was very encouraging. And other people in the 90s, you know, they were also very much encouraged to do different kind of, uh, make different RNA and test it out, therapy or uh, uh, vaccines already, 1993. So in the 1990s, if you are mRNA researcher, it was easy to follow the literature. Every year there is a one paper. But what happened? Like here, just mentioned Floyd Bloom. He was, uh, you know, editor of science. His uh, uh, script clinic, his paper came out. Never ever most of these people published again. They don't. Why? Not on the RNA. They published probably other field, but they moved because moved away from this field because very small amount of protein was produced from the RNA. Very short period of time. Yeah, I had to move again. I was demoted from my faculty position, ended up in a, a neurosurgery, and the 17 years I worked in this uh, tiny lab here by myself, still no lab coat, and uh, so I was trying to develop mRNA for therapy to treat stroke patient. I, we did the in vivo studies in the, with David Langer, again a student in the prior lab, who, you know, in a medical student, usually very obnoxious, but I kind of, I was patient, and when it, he learned that I, I was, uh, lost my position, he convinced the chairman in neurosurgery that neurosurgery needs a molecular biologist. This, so this is how one clinical department I go as a PhD to the other one. So, uh, so we did uh, experiments and tried to do, for, Mm, INOS, you know, was our favorite one. So that some RNA is not a drug, maybe the protein which is code, but the protein is an enzyme and produce something. Maybe that's like a nitric oxide would be the drug. And maybe invention is coming. He's a neurosurgeon. He knows that I can reach a certain area of the brain. Somebody has subarachnoid hemorrhoid. And I said, okay, I can make this INOS mRNA. And then we run around in the United States, try to find uh, some model animal. Anyway, I met really Drew Weissman at the Xerox machine, and I bragged him that I can make RNA, and he said that he came from Fauci's lab and he will make HIV. I, Fauci, you know, name was, didn't say anything to me at that time. I was not in that field, and so we did, I made the RNA for Drew, and he produced this human dendritic cells, and uh, he was very happy that so much protein was made, all of the uh, factors was up, and we had uh, um, TNF-alpha. Uh, but I want to treat the stroke patient. I don't need TNF-alpha. What happened? This RNA I'm making is, is inflammatory. Why it would be? And uh, so that's what uh, specifically for Billy. I promised that I will say how we come up with pseudouridine. So we. It was just this was uh, curiosity driven. We want to understand: is it all of the RNA is inflammatory? So maybe in our cells, if we take out, then maybe those and we put on the dendritic cell, maybe those are also inflammatory. So what we did: we isolated out uh, 
cells from different compartments. And of course, the big discovery was that the tRNA was not inflammatory, not inducing any uh, TNF alpha. Here is the purple, the RNA I made. I thought that it is the same inside the cell. So knowing that the tRNA has a lot of nucleoside modification came to the conclusion, okay, the modification may be suppressing immunogenicity, but which one? Which one? Because we were 108. Do, do we need some more or we don't know? And uh, we just couldn't, uh, you know, those enzymes put there because we always make all of the RNA from the four basic nucleotides and the enzyme food bed put it there. What, what enzyme, you know, we just couldn't call a promega to send one because they, they didn't even know which one. So we made RNA differently. We purchased uh, nucleoside triphosphate, which already had modification, and uh, five of them in incorporated to the RNA. And then when we analyzed these RNA, we found that um, some of them was not inflammatory. Some of them were still inflammatory. And when we tested out on dendritic cells, and uh, when we looked closer, we found that all of them which had modification on the uridine, then they were not inflammatory. Hmm. Who knew that? Well, what is about this uridine? But of course, we were interested to make uh, some product which has uh, translation. And so it was important that pseudouridine containing RNA translated 10 times more than the conventional uridine containing. And when we tested out in vivo, uh, in a uh, as that study actually was done by government money because first time and last time in my life I get a business grant from the NIH and not an RO one but a business grant and we could show that pseudouridin containing RNA can when when we injected EPO it can translate uh, much longer it is physiological the hematocrit goes up and. Uh, and can maintain, and it was not inflammatory. Um, so what happened is the little RNA, a little protein from the RNA, short period of time, now the RNA was ready for prime time. So, you know, we talk about recombinant protein, and of course it, was all, it is the fastest growing section of the um, pharmaceutical, but why I am so excited about mRNA, there is a lot of advantage of to it. You can read here and okay. And that was finally when I was finally terminated in my position, I ended up in the BioNTech. And so I, I started to make, uh, I wanted to always make mRNA coding for therapeutic protein and uh, Ugur Zahin gave me the responsibility, you know, we worked on making antibody here, by specific antibody coding mRNA. It went to clinical trial, conventional RNA coding, uh, conventional antibody coding RNA, we also did. I did also study in, uh, uh, with, together with Sanofi, where we injected uh, um, cytokine encoding RNA. So these are not vaccines because the RNA is not uh, antigen encoding and we could make the cold tumor hot and this is also went on clinical trial. And uh, other companies are also doing clinical trial and uh, many people did not know that even infectious disease vaccines went on clinical trial. Moderna had uh, three different clinical trials prior to COVID. LMP, you know, just as 100, 200 people, not 200 million. So people didn't know about it. But uh, CureVac also did rabies uh, trial with LMP, conventional already. And uh, of course, we reached the uh, time when most of you remember this. We learned the uh, sequence information and uh, Moderna. Well, March 16 injected the first volunteer. So this is how fast it was. But you know that I mentioned you, there, is a, there were decades before that uh, things happened and, and we worked on it. So how, how we did uh, all of these um, improvements? So first of all, the template. You remember at the beginning, I sent letter to people, send me a clone because, you know, some people had certain clones. But then like 89, we get PCR machines, so on. We could, if we had a cell line, we just could RT, PCR, TA cloning and get. Uh, or, or you could order from or origin uh, 96. And, and then 
from 1999, 97, Blue, Heron, and others, uh, gene script started to uh, synthesize gene for order. Yeah? So we did not, in the COVID, we, we did not need a package from Wuhan. Of course, nobody wanted to get a package from Wuhan, that, but uh, you just could get the information and 150 different places people started to do the vaccine. And uh, what else? We pre-improved a lot of translation, you know. When the cap was discovered, pharmacy already selling the cap, then we could buy enzymes and uh, we discovered how to make it non-immunogenic. Enzymatic kelp came first, uh, epicenter, later New England Biolab. We just heard that uh, Moderna used uh, their uh, uh, capping enzymes. Clinka from Trilink, with uh, uh, Pfizer incorporated. And of course, you know, the delivery we heard Pete talking about. But you know, at the beginning were liposomes, like I told you, 78 liposome, RNA was delivered. Then we have years when lipofectin, lipofectamine, and pay and many other things were there. Protamine, protamine went clinical trial. Protamine, you know, this uh, charged protein was uh, actually early on is also used. And of course, uh, I first time I remember 2013, I heard LMP formulated mRNA was translated in cells. And uh, yes, so these were the three companies were CureVac uh, 2000, BioNTech 2008, and Moderna 2010. And of course, so my role was, Scott asked me to talk about the future, but my time is up. And, uh, but if you follow well literature, you know that infectious disease, we have new vaccines almost every day, somebody announcing to have. We have also for bacteria and even parasites like malaria, more than 250 mRNA-based clinical trials ongoing. The cancer vaccines, which was always in the forefront, all of the companies were based on, like uh, CureVac and BioNTech was established on that. Acute diseases, even uh, 2018 already, Moderna had VGFA mRNA for wound healing as well as heart failure, genetic diseases, allergies, and so on. So, uh, what I am doing now? Uh, I am trying to inspire a new generation. And uh, I also have a book that's uh, right on the, on the right. And uh, so this is about that, uh, I d it will be out in October 11. And this is about how uh, persevere when constantly you are kicked out and, <laughs> and, and uh, demoted and whatnot, but you know, focus on science. And so that's, uh, I try to encourage people. I didn't write these children book, other people wrote it, but um, that one is, is about me. And thank you very much for your attention. Do we have any questions from the group? That was clear. So let me, uh, if I can just ask yes. one. I'm not sure I can think of a precedent where someone's basic science work translated so quickly into um, a public health product that would had such a profound impact on, on the whole world. How'd that feel, seeing, seeing your, your work mm -hmm. all of a sudden make its way into a vaccine that, that literally saved us from a global pandemic? So people m mentioning that, you know, I, I did it. You have seen that how many paper, how many people I cite. I always think about all of them. Many of them is not with us anymore. And I've, when I accept something, I always feel that everybody work. I never crave this spotlight and the recognition. And so I just try to handle it some way. And, and uh, all of those people who were demoted and whatnot and kicked out in their name also, because they worked so hard, just uh, somehow, you know, they <laughs> couldn't manage. But I mean, I am happy but, uh, that the vaccine was uh, successful. I, I expected so because we already had many trials uh, and, and we did preclinical studies in animals. We could see that for uh, influenza, for example, it was so great working and uh, much better than anything ever anybody could see it. And um, 
and uh, we, uh, BioNTech had a I was working nine years with BioNTech, so BioNTech and Pfizer 2018 uh, already we s signed that we will develop a, a vaccine for influenza. And so we worked on it. We were ready to start human trial. And it's just, you know, you had to change the template, kind of. So there were, you know, decades of work here and a lot of people contributed to it. Yeah. Thanks a lot.